Right then, now it is time for the big one. Tonight's final award, celebrating an outstanding contribution to film and television. Now, unfortunately, Armando Iannucci, who is due to be here to present this award, has had a family emergency, but everything's okay now. But the good news, and lucky for us, a very good friend of the recipient is here and has very kindly agreed to deliver his words. Please welcome BAFTA Scotland winner, Phyllis Logan. <laughs> This has turned out to be a surreal evening, <laughs> the most surreal of my life, I have to say. Well, you know, I have to start off by saying I, 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 um, I'm a great admirer of Armando Hinucci, and I was just thrilled to be his sub for the, for the night, and I'm glad everything's fine. But it's kind of serendipitous, because Peter and I go back a very long way. Um, we first met through Elaine, his wife. We were great pals then, and we became great pals and had such fun back in the day. It was so much fun, it was almost illegal. So <laughs> one particular instant I, incident I remember was Elaine and I being propelled down a street in a supermarket trolley being driven by Peter and my husband Kevin with us all belting out saddle up and ride your pony. <laughs> all good clean fun children. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Now to the real event. Um, so the next things you're going to hear are the words of the immense Imando, Armando Anucci, Inucci. See I can't even say his name now. But anyway, <laughs> I'm speaking his words, so here we go. Thank you very much. I'm extremely delighted to present the 2022 BAFTA Scotland Award for Outstanding Contribution to Film and Television. And this year, it goes to an outstanding talent. He not only played Leonardo da Vinci, but he is a true Renaissance man himself, actor, director, artist, singer, top class swearer, <laughs> funny runner, and time lord, Peter Capaldi. <laughs> I haven't finished yet. Now, Armando says, I want to say a few words about Peter. It's easier to assume that we Italian Scots all know each other, and it's easy because it's true. We all lived in the same street. But I didn't know Peter then because while I would spend my Sunday afternoons out in the street playing football with Lou McCary and Daniela Nardini, <laughs> Peter would be in his room practicing swearing at cabinet ministers. <laughs> For Peter wanted to be a great actor. And so, with that single-minded focus we all know him for, he went to art school. <laughs> but he left the Glasgow School of Art with his farewell piece an elaborate sculpture made from flammable material and fuses time to go off 40 years later. <laughs> because he still wanted to be a great actor, so he joined a band. Music was a great success for his second cousin. But soon the great Bill Forsyth came calling and cast him as Danny Olson in Local Hero. <laughs> Peter did not look back, winning plaudits for acting and directing, including an Oscar for his short film, 
Franz Kafka's It's a Wonderful Life. Now, the first time I met Peter properly was in 2003 when he came to audition for The Thick of It. And I had him down as the genial and charming presence he first showed as a local hero. But no, I can honestly say I've never met a nastier piece of work. <laughs> he was grumpy, sarcastic, and potentially violent. I felt I was being bullied into giving him the part of Malcolm Tucker until I realized Peter was acting. <laughs> and he was really good. And that local hero thing was good acting too. Of all the good actors I've ever worked with, Peter is the goodest. <laughs> I remember on the first day of the pilot for the thick of it, Malcolm is shouted at by a minister. And at that point, Peter, as Malcolm, paused to give the minister a stare so potent, so glowing with malice, that looking in the monitor, I instantly knew I would win a BAFTA. Actually, to be serious, what I admire about Peter and why he's won so many awards is that intense focus on whatever he does. If Peter wasn't in a scene, he'd be in a little glass office near the set seeing Malcolm's elaborate sweary speeches again and again until he could say them at full force without hesitation. And now, thanks to Peter, that saying Supercalifuckalicious effing dabby dildo. <laughs> it is a vocal warm up exercise for junior drama groups across Scotland. <laughs> but what makes Peter so great is his ability to bring a humanity and vulnerability to each of his characters. I always thought Malcolm was the devil, but Peter made him fragile and deliciously watchable. It's in everything he does, from skins to cybermen, from psychopaths to strictly Sinatra, from the darkness to the light. Peter will always deliver work that is careful, intelligent, and has great heart. Peter also has superb comic timing is a fan of slapstick and can run in a funny way. <laughs> <laughs> so it was always a challenge for writers to think of as many ways they could make Peter funny run on screen. <laughs> I cast him in the personal history of David Copperfield as man who runs away from the bailiffs. <laughs> and when it was announced in 2013 that Peter was going to become the next person who runs to and from space monsters. <laughs> I was delirious. With this larger profile, I know Peter, without any fuss, has used his position to help those in need, whether it's fundraising or giving a quiet message of support. As an old fan himself, he knows how much the fans want to connect and he goes out of his way to make the connection. And privately, I've seen him offer wise words and encouragement to actors young and not so young on set if ever they start to doubt themselves. Peter embody, embodies the quality the doctor highlighted in his last words before he regenerated, being kind. Just be kind. I mentioned the first day of filming on The Thick of It, and I'll end with the last. Because on that day, that last day, in the middle of a public inquiry, the scene called for Malcolm to be stuck in front of the cameras live, knowing he's been found for having possibly committed a crime. Peter has Malcolm pause as every emotion from fury, surprise, confusion, 
Panic and vulnerability crosses his face and shows in his eyes. It's a mesmerizing moment and looking in the monitors then, I knew what I'd always really known, that I was lucky to be working with one of the greats. Before we present the award, let's look at the life and work of some of the funniest runs of Peter Capaldi. right that's what you're getting the old carriage clock award some would say too young for that but then you have been giving us phenomenal performances indelible performances for decades i'm the doctor i've lived for over two thousand years and not all of them were good i've made many mistakes and it's about time that i did something about that Exciting, isn't it? Hi, Peter. I think at the Scottish BAFTAs was one of the very first times we actually met. I was tremendously keen to talk to you about the uh, about the thick of it, obviously because I was a huge fan, and you couldn't stop going on about that brand new Doctor Who, Matt Smith. Funny how things worked out, isn't it? Where are we? Nav comes offline. We'll have to do this old school. Wonderfully acerbic, daft, playful, and one of the kindest uh, men you could ever meet. You're very uh, realistic. Tongues. Shut up. Congratulations, Peter. Absolutely brilliant. Um, we were at art school together at the Glasgow School of Art. That's how long we've known each other, uh, back in the uh, early 1800s, I think that was. And of course, it would be nice to say that Peter's real talent wasn't particularly art. We had to wait to see what he really wanted to be. But unfortunately, he was the most talented illustrator in the department. This is the Glasgow Girls Expo. Oh, Glasgow Girls. Not the Glasgow Boys. I've had it up to here with the Glasgow Boys. Really? So do you think they're overrated? Over, overrated, overblown. Right. Over the hill, over, and I'm over it. He went on, of course, to have a little bash at trying to make a film where he uh, won an Oscar for that. I, I'm a, my mum and dad, and the Academy. Thanks a lot. Bye. Mr. Kafka. Could I have a word? Of course, of course. And then, of course, grew into the finest actor of his generation. Last couple of words, signs were in Gaelic. It's not one of my languages. You speak languages? French, Italian, Spanish, Greek, Turkish, Russian, Swedish, German, Japanese, Dutch and Polish. You make me feel ha bad and, and, and happy and, and exasperated and, and, and think, yeah, I don't know what I am with myself anymore. You make me feel mental. I'm not making you feel anything. You make me feel everything. <laughs> Not guilty. <laughs> we can do without the ritual humiliation. You know I'm against talking up the wall. Is that why you said climb the mountain of conflict? Do you know what you sounded like? You sounded like a fucking Nazi Julie Andrews. When we were shooting the film in the loop, and uh, every morning about half seven, we'd hear Peter doing his vocal warm ups, which consisted of him singing Frank Sinatra songs. And so while we were writing some early morning, last minute filth, uh, we'd hear Peter singing uh, Fly Me to the Moon and I've Got You Under My Skin. I loved writing Malcolm Tucker for Peter. And the reason for that is because when Peter performs your dialogue, it feels like Frank Sinatra singing one of your songs. And the words of the late, great Nat King fucking cool. Unforeseeable, that's what you are. Uh, there's no one better than Peter. Uh, do excuse me. 
I've got work to do. Don't ever call me fucking English again. Come on, people, what's got going here? I've got a to-do list here that's longer than a fucking Leonard Cohen song. Just don't worry, the PM is not going to sack you after a week. Sacked after 12 months, looks like you're fucked up. Sacked after a week, looks like he's fucked up. Don't you ever, ever call me a bully. <laughs> I'm so much worse than that. What's that film that you love? What film? The one about the fucking hairdress, the space hairdress and the cowboy. The guy's, he's got a tinfoil pal and a pedal bin. His father's a robot and he's fucking fucked his sister. Lego. They're all made of fucking Lego. Star Wars. That's the one, right? It's not that. You can fucking kill all the bad guys. And you'll be able to blow up the big... The Death Star. The Death Star yeah. thing. Yes. Then you can go and live happily ever after on the planet of the teddy bears. Well. Very walks, very walks. The last time I watched this program, and admittedly that was some time ago then, then one could feel the tingle. Hear the tick. Let me hear your tick, Miss Rowley. My tick? Are you forgetting why we're here? We're here to get your boyfriend back from the dead. So buck up and give me some attitude. Peter, he, he went missing on set one day. And um, Peter being Peter, uh, just got lost. And um, then the next time I saw him, it was like just before a take. And uh, he was um, under the hairdryer because he was soaking wet because he just found a button, so I decided to press it. But it was actually a shower. Don't believe I've had the pleasure. Mr. Curry, this is Paddington. He's a bear. I can see that. You must be a long way from home. I'm from darkest Peru. Oh. Well, I'm not down there. Creditors make that road impossible. Two tailors and a most unreasonable muffin man. Run! 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 He's a lovely, lovely actor and a beautiful face. I could watch that face forever. There's so much in it. Um, had he said no, I don't know who I would have asked. Thank God he said yes. Why Catholicism, Father? Something permanent. I wish you all the very best, and I think probably we're going to go for a knighthood next. It has been a joy and a pleasure to know you all these years, to have worked with you on Doctor Who, and uh, to be working with you again on The Devil's Hour. As I was once moved to say, uh, thank God in Scotland for Peter Capaldi. I'm very glad to hear that Scotland is finally thanking you back. But at what cost? At what cost? Great success does always come with great personal cost, and he, in fact, has had the same absolutely beautiful, talented, funny wife for 31 years, a gorgeous daughter, son-in-law, lovely grandchild, and literally hundreds of friends who love him unconditionally. You know, Peter, I think you should maybe have a wee think about turning that sorry life around. It's my pleasure. My true pleasure to my friend, Peter Capaldi. I'm so honored to give this prize to you. Thank you, um, thank you so much. Thank you, Phyllis, that's a lovely surprise. And uh, the pavilion wants its costume back for Aladdin. <laughs> um, I don't know how to follow that, it's amazing. And uh, Armando, I just like, I'm, I'm so sorry Armando can't be here tonight. Uh, I'm glad that he's confounding the racial stereotype uh, of Scottish Italians. It makes me 
put me in my mind with my parents. I wish they could be here tonight, but uh, they were short-staffed in the chip shop. Um, <laughs> But truly, they, did, they, they taught me everything I know, the real Scottish virtues of hard work and sarcasm, uh, <laughs> which have got me through. Outstanding contribution to film and TV, I don't know. I think this is really an award for uh, getting lucky, for being lucky enough to be born in Scotland. <laughs> into a family of immigrants from Ireland and Italy. Lucky enough to meet so many people along the way who changed my life. Bill Forsyth. 40 years ago, I was just up here, an art student, living off pakora and lager for breakfast. <laughs> Bill Forsyth scooped me up and put me in Local Hero. It was an act of kindness and confidence that baffled me uh, and much of the industry <laughs> to this day. But I wouldn't be here without him, uh, and nor would a lot of others. Yeah. Armando, fabulous, fabulously gifted, wonderful, kind um, Armando. By the time I'd met him, I had had some ups and downs. I'd been dropped from the, the best series of Trollerman, uh, uh, when I used to do the voiceover, and I was thrown overboard uh, <laughs> in favor of Ken Stott. And then I was down to doing the voice for um, uh, Scotland's Top Dogs. <laughs> so things were going okay, but not as well as I might have liked. So when I went to the audition for The Thick of It, and Armando said to me, there's no dates, there's no stars, there's no actual script, and would you like to improvise something? I had that look on my face. <laughs> that was basically telling him to fuck the fuck off. <laughs> Which, as it turned out, was the right vibe to bring into the room. <laughs> he gave me the job and it changed my life. Scott, uh, Stephen Moffat, yes, I did meet him for the first time at the Scottish BAFTAs. He had a kind of lost look about him. <laughs> I thought that might be just because he was from Paisley and it was, <laughs> it was quite, a, quite a big do, you know. Um, but actually, he was looking for something. I didn't know whether it was for a place to stick his wee cocktail stick from his <laughs> BAFTA chipolata, but no, he was looking for a new Doctor Who. And off we went, and he took me on the most magical journey, a journey that Shooty is about to embark on, and I suspect... <laughs> Shooty knows this already, because I can see it in his heart and see it in him but he's about to discover how beautiful and wonderful and cosmic the human race can really be. And also he'll be able to spot an anorak in his peripheral vision <laughs> at 50 yards, and he'll have to figure out what to do. Uh, so thank you, Stephen, for that. There's so many people I'd like to thank, but I can't because A, we don't have time, and B, they're not really famous, so you don't care. <laughs> um, it does bring me, make me reflect about all the help I've received from friends, colleagues, those who've encouraged me along the way, people who were kind, people who just gave me the time of day. And it's a timely reminder that we all have a duty to help those trying to start out, to extend a hand. Um, <laughs> but please don't send me your tapes. I'm so busy at the moment. Um, it's been so amazing to work with so many heroes, Terence Davis, James Gunn, James Gandolfini. Um, but it's all about uh, people and the people you love and the people who are around you. Um, am I going on too long? You can go as long okay, as you want. All right. uh, no, I won't, I won't, I'll be over in a minute, I'll be over in a minute. Yeah. I just want to say about actors, actors are brilliant. Um, and it's great when you get an award and it's all like this and everything's going really well. But uh, for a lot of actors, it's not going well. Uh, and from day to day, from week to week, it can be really tough. And you kind of get uh, uh, through the door and you kind of get out the door sometimes. Uh, so I just want them to, to, to know that sometimes the stars align and you get lucky. And that's what happened to me.
So finally, I'm just about to go. My wonderful agent, Kate Morrison at B-Side. Thank you, you're absolutely brilliant. Uh, all the team at The Devil's Hour, thank you so much for all that wonderful work. All the team on Criminal Record who had a riot last night. To my dear friends and loved ones, particularly my sister Stella, Sissy, Dan, the glorious infant phenomenon, Finlay, my darling wife, Elaine, it's your strength, kindness, wisdom, and love that's enabled me to have this career. <laughs> You've always been there through all the ups and downs, and that you chose to share your life with me is the greatest luck of all. So thank you very much. Thank you, BAFTA. Thank you.